Hello everybody and welcome back to what I'm going to refer to as the main event of Shift Happens. We have the CEO of Avpoint here, TJ, with us. We are in Washington, D.C., having a really good time. And if you've watched any of the other videos in the series, we've done a lot about the technology and everything else. But I think this is a perfect time to actually kind of dive into Avpoint because who's mm. better to do it than the CEO <laughs> to get the genesis? Because a, an event like this doesn't happen overnight. A, a company like this doesn't happen overnight. So I'm going to welcome you. Thank you for taking time to us thank you and uh let's just dive in so what's how take us all the way reel us all the way all back, the way back all, all the way, way back. back all right how did avpoint get started so right this uh, is a really good story actually so me and my co-founder kai gong we met actually at lucent technology bell labs okay oh, that's okay. my first job out of court now uh, okay. i was at electrical computer engineering okay so back to 97 and then uh, i quickly realized that lucent is really just a telco company where engineers go retire <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> two years out of that, yep. I, I went to Wall Street. So I worked at uh, Deutsche Bank uh, and then Lehman oh, Brothers, okay. writing trading systems. Um, and then 9-11 happened. Yep. My office is 40th floor of World Trade Center 1. Oh, wow. So oh, everyone wow. on my floor survived. Okay, well, luckily. that's good. Uh, but as you well know, it's a life-changing event. Oh, absolutely. For everyone involved. For me, I decided that instead of spending more and more years on Wall Street, Life is just so unpredictable. Yep. I just should do my own thing. So sure. I decide to uh, go to graduate school. And won't you know it, I start doing uh, graduate studies, uh, doctorate studies in uh, data mining. Okay. This is before big data. It's even a word. Yeah. Um, at NYU. And then at the same time, my co-founder, Kai, um, he also got laid off by Lucent. Okay. It's Lucent gone from the most commonly held stock in America mm -hmm. to then the internet bubble First, yep. right, 2001. So he's 12 years older than me. He's like, well, I really want to do something my own. I also, because we don't want to, you know, just keep on working for sure. big companies. Sure, sure, sure. So he started at point and mm -hmm. I was in graduate school and I have all this time. I have nothing else to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Besides coursework. Yeah. So so we started at point and um, we, we were all programmers, coders, and we started looking at this ecosystem. Our first product is actually called uh, email app. So we started looking at email backup because we okay. really understood the Microsoft stack, especially email. Sure. The format, et cetera. But then, you know, 2001, 2002, just, you know, two-man company. One, yeah. one person's in grad school full-time. Kai actually coding in the library by himself yep. for three years straight. Uh, nobody would give us a chance, right? Because even back then, exchange is quite crowded of a market mm -hmm. as an ecosystem. So then Microsoft came out with this thing called Lake Tahoe. Yo, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Lake Tahoe. Right. And all of a sudden, people... As typical Microsoft uh, first release is not as great yeah. as future releases. <laughs> um, Tried and true words. Right <laughs> so we're like, hey, Lake Tahoe used the same data format as mm -hmm. Exchange back then. It's flat file. Yep. Um, so we start to essentially back up SharePoint. Um, but even then, we made no money because, again, nobody's really using SharePoint yeah. <laughs> except some of the biggest partners like HP and Dell. And then Microsoft came out with a second iteration of SharePoint, SharePoint 2003. Okay. And this, I still remember this vividly at TechEd. And we just had a little cloth over like a table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we went to a session where Microsoft said, hey, look at SharePoint 2003. It's awesome. But you know what? There's no migration path because it's a completely new SQL backend, uh, okay, complete okay. new schema. There's no straightforward mapping. And then their best partners like HP and Dell just yeah. went up in arms like, what do you mean? You left us high and dry. Yeah. And of course, we're the one that said, hey, we can do it. And yep. we got the whole room's attention. And then Jeff Tieper came over. Jeff uh, Tieper's here yep. today. Yep, we talked That's to when him. I met Jeff Tieper back then. Okay. And like, wow, you guys have a product? Yeah, we have a product. And then we, we so that's what really put us on the map. Like I mentioned yesterday gotcha. on the keynote, our first product that made money yeah. <laughs> two and a half years into starting this company is actually migration from 2001 to 2003. Gotcha. And then people say, like, we get credibility. Oh, th these guys actually is real deal. Their mm -hmm. product work. So we really garner a reputation to bite off the hardest bone that can one can chew and, and be the technical excellent partner. So we start with, obviously, backup, yeah. migration, and then governance, and mm -hmm. then compliance. And then we then took it to back in 2013 days when people mm -hmm. still say, hey, is, what is this thing cloud thing? And yeah. is it real? Is it ready for prime time? We see that as a future 
Okay. And we see that SharePoint is not only not going away because a lot of people are saying, oh, SharePoint at that time, as you know, right. Bomber was still CEO yep. and Microsoft is getting a lot of pressure, right? Yep. And bad rep. So we say, no, not only is SharePoint not going away, but SharePoint is going to be the fabric for modern workplace collaboration mm -hmm. in the cloud. Yep. And now fast forward to today. It was a good bet. It's a very good bet, right? We've been doing cloud SaaS data management for Office 365 for five years now. Okay. We're yeah. the most mature vendor that has our solution sitting in Azure, consuming almost as much Azure in a year as Accenture for a small yeah. company like us. And so, yeah, so that's where we are today. Uh, wow, that's, it sounds so easy. All you got to do is just start a company, <laughs> not be profitable for two and a half years, yes. make a good product, and then just keep making great products. Honestly, that's what I, I, I yeah. tell people all the time. I, I, I do a lot of the, these uh, talks at, for entrepreneurs, sure. at, at business schools. I say, you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be prepared to not make any money in the first oh, three yeah. years. Live in your mom's house, yeah. live in your friend's basement. That's what you got to do. Like everyone sees Facebook, Snapchat, mm -hmm. you know, what have you, but those are one in a million. Yeah. Right. So, but the right mentality to really be successful is you have to go through that uh, experience. Yeah. There's very few companies that just push product A right. out the door <laughs> and then they're billionaires right. in a couple of That's like winning that, a lottery, right? Yeah. It, yeah. That does not happen. <clears throat> yeah. And so it's interesting to hear all the trenches that you've had to basically dig out and then overcome and then move beyond. So what do you see as your, you know, your you've got your strengths going forward, mm -hmm. but what do you see are the challenges for, for the years ahead for Apple? Because mm -hmm. Microsoft is obviously rapidly evolving, yep. which means you guys have to be effectively re evolving faster than them right. to stay ahead of them. What are your challenges going ahead? Well, we have been a Microsoft, exclusive Microsoft partners for 18 years. Wow. Yeah, so okay. we've been calling this dancing with the elephant, you know, yeah. you're a little guy and then there's big yeah. giants and you have to dance with the elephant. Um, <clears throat> so we have within our DNA moving fast, fail forward. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in the software business, a year is an eternity. Yeah. Now in cloud, every month there's a new update. Yep. We do, we update our SaaS platform every single month with DevOps, right? Gotcha. We want to increase that frequency even lower. And we use microservices APIs to highly scale, to have release rings at a tenant mm -hmm. level, to do real-time patching for specific tenants. And you know, enterprise customers are very, very demanding. Yes. So you have to just move fast and fail forward. So we actually sit on six different partner advisory council boards yep. at Microsoft. So we actually see the product direction well yeah, ahead of the game. So that's we know helpful. where the market is moving. We know that as Microsoft continue to improve their cloud services, mm -hmm. there will be things that will be cannibalized over time. So we as a value added partner in this great ecosystem, we have to continue to swim upstream and provide value. And we've been doing that for 18 years and really this is nothing new. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So let's, let's reel it back on the, the timeline of things to Avpoint today. Right. W why don't you just talk about where you guys are located, how large you're, I mean, you, you yep. guys are everywhere, it seems like. At least <laughs> you and Ducks are traveling everywhere. I mean, we truly are a global company. And yeah. this is another thing, right? So uh, our minority investor is Goldman Sachs. Out yep. of all the Goldman portfolio companies, um, we actually have the biggest global footprint. As, as a software company, obviously we started in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Our headquarters in Jersey City on the waterfront. Um, but 45% of our business is in North America. 30% okay. is in Asia. Gotcha. So Japan, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand. And then the rest of it is in Europe. Okay. So we, we actually have quite a expansive global footprint. And we did this intentionally. We, we, we grew very quickly and we, we went, first office we opened is in London. Okay, I was gonna ask, my next yeah. question was, how did you decide where to go once you said, okay, you know, there's some magic here. How did you decide on London? So, this is what, again, AppPoint is the first time we start a business, so, so we don't know sure. anything. <laughs> uh, both founders are coders, so I never sold, I never did marketing. Yeah. Uh, we were just geeks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, well, London sounds like a, a natural place to go because they speak English. Yeah. And <laughs> that, was it. that was yeah. it. That was it. It turned out that actually London is pretty hard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> anytime you go to a new market, it's hard. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. So there's, there's London and then we went to Tokyo, we went to Australia. Every single market, the first couple of years, is always very hard mm -hmm. um, to, to make it, to have roots. We just celebrated our 10-year anniversary last year in Tokyo. We celebrated our 10-year anniversary this year in Singapore. Wow. Japan is our biggest international market yep. today outside of USA. And then the second biggest is Germany. Okay. So every single market we're in, um, it really does take time. So what we think about is you know, we, we, we want to think globally 
but we have to act locally. So even in the days of SaaS software, you're talking about same software backend, yeah. but the way you go to market, the way you actually make the solution work for your customers, mm -hmm. you have to understand their local needs and their local specific demands. So that's how you can truly be a successful global software company. Gotcha. Yeah. So how long did it take you to turn profitability in London? Um, so profitability in London, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a couple years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but it's funny, we, uh, we got our first Series A investment from Summit Partners, again, Minority, back yeah. in 2006. And so from 2014, for the next nine years, we grew exponentially. Every year we double or triple wow. our revenue. And as you know, we became the largest SharePoint yeah. ISV. Yep. Uh, and in order to do that, we had to do migration, integration, backup, data mm -hmm. management, governance, compliance. So we do the whole end-to-end -end information lifecycle management versus, you know, you have the backup players like sure. Veritas, Convo, those bigger guys. They're very much singular solution providers. Yep. But we think that now, especially in the world of cloud with Office 365, treating Office 365 as entirety of platform, end-to-end -end information management is far more important than yep. just a siloed approach to yep. say, hey, I just do backup, I just do archiving, and I just do compliance, Sure. right? So, but yeah, so so we, we, we went through that, and then the last, um, you know, four or five years, we went through this painful process of converting our entire business from a traditional maintenance subscription, mm -hmm. um, maintenance, uh, perpetual software maintenance model to a subscription model. Sure, the SA, so, SA, so this SA, is a long way to answer your profitability question. <laughs> We've always been profitable, yeah. but there's obviously ups and downs. Exactly. <coughs> I actually say we survived three major recessions. The recession 2008 when yep. the world froze, 12, okay. and then the last two years self-manufacturing recession converting to subscription company. Because I don't know if uh, folks know this, actually it's not just about putting your technology in the cloud. Um, it's, it's an entire business model change, yep. right? So you're putting your technology in the cloud, all of a sudden you have costs, yep. right? And also, you're managing that cloud services for your customer. So yep. software as a service. So you have cloud operations. Yep. You have to do cloud security. So this is where ISO certifications come in. But also, more importantly, from a business model perspective, your salespeople come model has to change, yep. right? But everyone, every year, they would look at their W-2s. They want to make sure they make more this yeah, year than exactly. last year. Yep. Okay? So at the same time, though, the amount of cash we receive from the customer say, cash flow changes significantly. It's very different. Yeah. So let's say the software is hundred dollars, right? Let's yep. just make the math easy. Usually ours is much Whatever. more than that. But hundred dollars. Usually a perpetual software, you buy hundred dollars up front, yep. and then the uh, maintenance for it for three year contract is twenty dollars per year. Yep. So total contract value for three years in the old model is hundred sixty dollars, mm -hmm. but you get one hundred twenty dollars up front. Yep. In a subscription world, same $160, you only get one third yep. up front. So $53. So all of a sudden, for every single deal, I get 40% of the cash I used to receive. At yep. the same time, we still carry this PL of you know 1,500 people employees. Yep. So yeah, that, that was really fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can imagine there were some stressful nights. And, and we did that without borrowing any money. Like a similarly sized Goldman portfolio company, we know that they borrow like $45 million. Yeah. So historic, we have zero debt on a balance book. We have oh, always wow. been cash positive. And it's just a tremendous discipline that yeah. we had to put in. I'm not, you know, it's it's not easy. No, especially I, I, the, I always the tell zero people. debt part of it. Because it's real easy to go, yeah. to your thing, you guys, you guys could have just leaned back and said, you know what? We'll just we'll get another 30 million bucks and whatever. But the right. fact that you did it without doing that, yep. uh, that takes serious kahunas. That's right. Um, it's, it's the technical it was <laughs> <laughs> It was not easy. It was not for the faint of heart. Uh, I still remember at WPC, it was now Inspire. Yep. You used to call it WPC. Four years ago, I was on stage and speaking to a large audience say. You I know, was at this one, actually. Oh, you were? Yes, I was. Great. I was yes, like, I was. think about the future where now you're talking about $1 per user per month world. Yep. And how do you make money in that? You have to figure that out yep. as an ISV, as a Microsoft partner. But look at the market, right? 180 million active users in Office 365 for yep. enterprise. Another 40 to 50 million consumer. Yep. So a dollar per user, that's yep. not too bad. No, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Yeah. 
not bad at all. Well, TJ, I know you have an extremely busy schedule. We were joking earlier before yeah. the camera started rolling. I said, who travels more, Ducks or TJ? <laughs> and Ducks, and anybody who watches this channel regularly knows that Ducks travels a lot. But the fact that you travel more means we got to get you out the door because I'm sure you're probably heading towards a plane in the future. Well, thank you. But to everybody else, make sure to, uh, we'll link stuff down below, but also hit that subscribe button. We very much appreciate your time. Check out everything that's going on Shift Happens. We got a lot of stuff up on the channel and on the site coming soon. TJ, thanks for hanging out. Everybody else, we'll catch you right back here next time. Thank you very much. See you next time.